Today, I'd like to talk about low intensity steady state cardio, LIS. Steady state cardio is when you work out for a long period of time at a slow, low intensity. Commonly, it's associated with running, cycling, going on a machine in the gym and just staying at that pace for a long period of time. It's become a little bit more unpopular in recent times with the growth of high intensity training and strength training. And people often associate CrossFit with those two types of training, HIIT training and strength training. And to some extent, it's true, we do perform a lot of that style of training, but the goal of CrossFit is to get people fitter across what we consider to be the 10 components of fitness. And these components are strength, power, speed, agility, balance, coordination, stamina, cardiovascular endurance, accuracy, and flexibility. When I program workouts for us here at CrossFit Chiltern, I'm trying to make sure that over the course of our training cycle, we're covering all of those elements of fitness and we're seeing improvement in all of those elements of fitness. So what it means is that our workouts are very diverse and very varied, and we will cover from the very short sprinty style workouts, the strength and power workouts, to longer, more endurance pieces. But obviously we're constrained to some extent in terms of what we do in house or with our workouts by our time domains. Our classes are an hour long. Obviously we have to have some coaching in there. We have to have a warm up, some kind of cool down. So generally the long workouts for us well, the maximum they could possibly go to if we had no warm up, no cool down would be an hour, more likely somewhere, somewhere around the 45 minute mark. Most of us know the benefits of HIIT training and strength training. HIIT training, obviously we're, we're working high intensity. We can burn more calories in a short period of time and we can raise the metabolism for a 24 hour period as well, which is obviously going to help our calorie burn throughout that day. There's also some benefits to hormonal balance by training at higher intensities and working through those different energy systems has benefits to the cardiovascular system as well, the heart and the lungs. Strength training is crucial for you to have longevity and resilience. In other words, for you to grow old whilst feeling young. The ability to get up out of a chair is basically a squat and we train squats. The ability to pick something up off the ground is a deadlift. To get up from the floor is a burpee or a press up or a Turkish get up. All of those movements that you require as you move through life to keep yourself independent are crucially important and therefore we include them in our training. And for aesthetics as well, it's important that you train strength so that you build muscle tone and you get leaner and fitter. I've talked in previous videos about bulking up and how you don't bulk up unless you want to bulk up. So I won't go down that train today, but we include strength training in what we do here. And we also include power and speed and all those other factors. Obviously the disadvantage of LIS, one of the main disadvantages is that you're not training all those different factors. More often than not, you're training maybe just one or two of those elements. And if you're just training a single modality, if you're just training running or cycling or something along those lines, you're getting very limited benefit outside of building endurance, um, cardiovascular endurance more than anything else. But that doesn't mean we shouldn't include it in our training. The benefits of low intensity training. Well, the first thing is it's easy to do. Everyone can do low intensity training, all you have to do is go for a walk. That is you doing steady state cardio. So you need no equipment, you need no previous experience, you can go out there and do it whatever level of fitness you are at. As long as you're able to walk, you can take part in low intensity steady state training. So there's a huge benefit to that. It has very uh, little, if anything, it's got bent, sorry, it's, it's got no negative effect on the central nervous system. It doesn't overload your stress hormones. It's actually good for lowering that. It's good for improving your recovery. It means you can do tons of it without overloading your body, provided you do it appropriately. The other huge benefit of why you should be doing it is, is if you are looking to improve your body composition. 
I actually had a question earlier from someone who was struggling to reduce their carbohydrate intake. If you watched my previous video on carbs, you'll know that carb intake needs to be low if you're looking to change your body composition. They were struggling to lower that down because of their, um, they were vegan, so it's difficult when you are vegan to cut your carbohydrates out and get enough protein and fats in your diet. Well, one of the ways you can help lose fat when you can't cut your carbs enough is to add more list training into your lifestyle because what you can do when you're when you're training at low intensity steady state is obviously you can burn calories over a long period of time and if you're let's say you're working out and you're doing a workout that's high intensity and you're burning four five hundred calories but you can only sustain that three or four days a week and you need some rest period in there you can top up your training by doing some of this steady state work to help to burn off that blood glucose and glycogen that's stored in your system and allow you to tap into those fat reserves. The great thing about when you're working at that lower rate of intensity is that you can use the aerobic system, which means you can use fatty acids, that's body fat, to fuel your workout. So you don't actually need to have glycogen in your system, that's carbs for those of you who haven't watched my previous video, to work out during that. So if you are, let's say you're doing an extreme diet where you're cutting carbs to a minimum, then really the, the main workout you want to include in, in those extreme diets are these steady state workouts because they won't feel as horrible as those high intensity pieces. You want to have some of that in there, but I would, I would say steady state should be, in terms of time-wise, taking up the majority of your time when you're trying to burn fat. So if you struggle to cut carbs and you struggle to cut that glycogen out of your system, then adding this workout into your system is going to help, especially if you combine it with um, other forms of working out. And I think that's the kind of, the huge benefit of it is that you can just add it in any way you like into your training. Where people go wrong when they're doing low intensity training is that they, they think that they have to be jogging or they think they have to be on a bike, and that's the only thing that they'll do. They think, right, okay, today is my you know, steady state cardio, so I'm just gonna sit, sit on a machine for hours on end, or run down the road for hours on end, sit on a bike. All of these have huge issues with your body and how it affects your body. Think about what happens when you're doing machine work or running, especially road running, or cycling. Well, cycling we can talk about first of all. Cycling is hugely popular nowadays with people my age and older. So the 40 plus generation, kind of, it's become a little bit more popular than golf, I believe. You know, you can't go anywhere without seeing on a Lycra down the road. And maybe shouldn't be in Lycra. Um, you know, if you think you need to cut wind uh, turbulence and you weigh 18 stone, you might look at other ways you could improve your efficiency, but there's another subject I can uh, wind people up on. But think about cycling, you're on a bike sports bike, you're rounded forward, curved, reaching low on those handlebars, your knees are coming up to near your chest when you're cycling. Think about what that's doing for your posture and how horrendous that is for your posture. I mean, imagine if you sat down all day at your desk in that position, and some of you may well do. If you're working on your laptop on your thighs all day, you're probably in that same horrendous posture for the majority of the day. So if that's your you know, your lifestyle is you're sitting at a desk all day and then you drive home and then you sit on the sofa and you think, right, okay, now I need to get active. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to sit down for three hours. Is that the best way to fix what is wrong with your health? Cycling is great. It's great fun. It's easy to do. It's cheap for some people, although some of the bikes out there aren't, it's not cheap, but it's cheap for some people if you want it to be cheap. Um, it's very good for de-stressing. Mentally, it's great. You're out there in the outdoors. Um, there's a little bit of risk to your life, but obviously um, we have to have some risk in our lives when you're out there on a bike. Fresh air, you know, all of the benefits from that are huge. But what I'm saying right now is if, if that's the only thing you are doing, you could be doing yourself harm in some areas while it's getting benefit in other areas. So you have to make sure that you have a balance with your cycling and the same with running if you're if you're only running especially on the road the number of people that i've worked with that have had issues with their pelvis and their back when they are road running all the time and i'm not necessarily saying it's even the impact but it's that often when you run on a road you're running with the camber therefore you're 
you're running at a position where your pelvis is tilted for the entire duration of that run. Think about if you're running at a tilt and you're counterbalancing, you're in a leaned position here. I mean, I come from experience where I've you know, messed up my body from being a golf professional for the last 20 or so years and you stand in this position the whole time. It's going to negatively affect you. It's going to work its way up through the chain, knees, ankles, hips, spine, neck, postural problems, because obviously running as well, a lot of people don't really know how to, to run efficiently and correctly if you've taken up later in life. Some people are built to run. Some people maybe need to learn how to run better. And there's some amazing places that can improve your running and fit you for the shoes correctly. But a lot of people don't do that. Um, so there is a high risk of causing yourself long-term injury and uh, negative effects on your posture. Again, much like cycling, huge, huge benefits. I'd rather someone was doing something than nothing. Um, so I'm not saying you shouldn't be running. And if you are an amazing runner, obviously, you know, you've had no ill effects for years. I'm not going to say you stop running because you're having those benefits from it. But for some people, you need to think about, again, that balance. Running is great, but in isolation, you are limiting the benefits and you may be causing some negatives in there to counter some of the benefits that you get from that. And if you're on a machine, you're kind of in that in, that in between where you're cycling or running elliptical, all kind of things. You're in a fixed plane of motion throughout that time you're not really working on your mobility. All of these things that we're doing here, they're not really improving your mobility. I would say if you are a runner, by the way, I'd much prefer people doing stuff like trail running, where you're different train terrains, uphill, downhill, one foot higher than the other, one foot lower than the other, kind of climbing over stuff. All of that's, I think, much more beneficial than just sitting down on the running, especially a treadmill, not great, long-term, okay? Long-term. So, all of those modalities are great for you but not in isolation. And that's what I'm getting at, is that you should be combining that with some form of strength training, definitely some form of mobility training and posture improvement. So exercises that are going to work and improve your posture, even if it's just as simple as doing some rows, doing some rotations to get your body moving through the transverse plane to moving through different planes of motion, getting your hips moving into full extension. If you're a cyclist, you never get into full extension. Okay, um, supplementing what you're doing and you will see the benefits. If, if running cycling is, is what you consider your sport, you will see benefits to your sport from adding in these elements of training into your workouts. The other option you have is that running, cycling, and all of these elements aren't the only option for steady state cardio. People seem to think yeah, they are, they're not. They're not the only option you have. There's plenty more, ex uh, more things that are equally as exciting. I didn't want to um, that get down on the runners. Like, there's equally as exciting and more varied if you don't enjoy doing one thing for a long period of time, you can vary it up. All that you have to do when you are doing steady state cardio is be able to maintain a conversation at a kind of steady pace. Maybe you can just feel your breath going a little bit throughout that workout. If you're doing that through a workout, you are doing steady state cardio. In fact, you know, whatever you do, like if you're in a cardio um, workout, but it's just you want to elevate your heart rate to a bit where you're, you're kind of feeling a little bit, you're a bit out of breath, but you can have a conversation. It's not like, <gasps> yeah, you can speak throughout, but you feel like you're having to work a little bit harder to get a conversation out. I like to combine different movements in steady state cardio. I love performing carries, carrying something heavy over a distance, whether that's on your shoulder, whether that's just heavy shopping. That's a great way to go. Obviously, we need to make sure that we're at the right level intensity, so we're not gonna be doing the heaviest possible carry. We're doing something we can carry for a long period of time. You know, a great example would be, you know, a couple of kettlebells carrying that for mile loops or something like that, or heavy um, petrol cans. Adding some weight to yourself when you go for a walk, adding a rucksack on your back or a weighted vest when you go for a walk will just increase that level of intensity that little bit higher, make it a bit more challenging, just weighing yourself down. Maybe you could carry a child on your shoulders. If you've got a family man, there's, you can combine two activities for the price of one. Something simple, some body weight movements into your workout, just doing some lunges or some body weight squats, all of those things. Walking lunges are a great way to add, add GPP. Skipping, put that in there and you can make it into a, a circuit. So, you know, I do a circuit with, with someone today actually where we did some sled pushes, we did some farmer's carries, we did a, a, a plank 
for a short period of time. Uh, then we did some, some light Turkish get-ups and some ball slams and sit-ups, but all at an intensity where we could maintain a conversation. So there are some times where we're not going to be training for a score, we're just training to maintain that level. And the reason we want to be working at a lower intensity sometimes is so that our body can recover because recovery is when we get some benefits. If you're looking to get leaner and, and get muscle tone and more toned up, your body doesn't do that unless you're resting and recovering and being able to have those recovery days will allow you to perform at a higher intensity going forward. There's a reason why they don't play sports matches seven days a week, 365 days a year, because the performance would drop down dramatically and obviously the risk of injury would rise exponentially. Another, ex another activity that I love is some form of yoga. There's various, you, again, you have to look at the various intensities of what you're going to, but various forms of yoga will get you to that point as well. So what I'm saying with this is you want some steady state cardio in your life, definitely. But make sure if you're doing a single modality workout, running, cycling, one of those, you are not just doing that, but you're combining that with other forms of workout that will improve your other areas of fitness. So strength and, and balance and coordination, all of those things, flexibility, you're working those into there. And don't limit yourself to those single modality workouts. Vary your workouts up. You can make anything into steady state cardio. You've just got to know what it should feel like. And like I say, it should feel like a brisk walking pace where you can have a conversation, but you're working that little bit harder. Super important for your recovery. Super important if you're looking to burn fat and especially if you're struggling to hit the carbohydrate numbers that you should be hitting. In other words, few enough carbs in there to be able to burn fat and you need to get rid of that excess glycogen or add one of these in there. Do it. You could take your family out for the day so you could combine activities. If you can get outside whenever you're doing this steady state work as well, obviously much better because of the mental health benefits and that's where I haven't really covered that enough, but there's huge mental health benefits to working at that intensity for a long period of time. We all need that um, mindfulness period and that's really going to help, especially if you're watching this video now during what we're going through with the lockdown, it could be really important for you guys. So yes, steady state cardio is worth it, but just make sure you're doing it correctly. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions, if you have any videos you'd like me to make on some topics of your choice, please, I'm happy to help. I will be releasing these videos as a podcast series too, so those you can listen to it on the go, maybe while you're doing some steady state cardio, you don't know. Again, please like and subscribe and stay tuned for the next video coming soon. Thanks guys.